Bundy's Garage, Bundy here. I'm going to get this crankshaft pulley bolt off right there, off this Honda J-Series V6 engine I have. This is a core. I'm starting to do my videos on it. I have two sockets here, the Lyle heavy-duty 19 millimeter, and then a standard 19 millimeter. You can just see how much more beefier that one is, how much more meat you have on this socket. They actually sent me this one to try out, so I'm going to try it out with my impact gun and see if I can break that crank bolt loose. If uh, if you don't have a air gun, pneumatic tools, I'll put a link in the description below of where I actually um, manually take one off with hand tools. Uh, but I do recommend that you get a torch, a map torch or a propane torch. There's actually a small oxyacetylene setup that I have. The video that I put in the description below, I actually had to use uh, a torch to heat up this bolt right here. I know Brian's mobile has one as well. So let me show you my uh, compressor and what it's sitting at as far as PSI. And I'll get my gun out and then we'll try this socket and then we'll try this one. So you can see the air compressor sitting right at 120, right above 120 PSI. So let me get my uh, impact gun and see if we can break this uh, bolt loose. So I have this Craftsman gun, half inch. Typically I'll use uh, Ingersoll Rand, but I'm going to try this one instead. <coughs> okay, that's set up right. Got the... Uh, Standard 19 millimeter. Here's the Lyle one. So let's try the standard 19 millimeter first. <coughs> Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Nothing. Let's try the bigger one. So I was, <laughs> that's pretty cool. With the Lyle 19 millimeter socket, they have a part number on here. I was able to get the uh, crankshaft pulley bolt off. This little 19 millimeter that has no meat on it did absolutely nothing. So that is how you get off a Honda Acura crankshaft pulley bolt. That is pretty cool. I'll put a link in the description below of this Lyle socket. You can buy them on Amazon, I think. I think, but uh, yeah, if that didn't work, um, you'd have to apply heat, be that uh, map gas, propane, or oxyacetylene to this bolt right here. And don't worry, I know I get all kinds of comments, oh, the heat's going to hurt the O-ring and the seals inside there. That heat does not penetrate far enough into the crank to actually do any damage at all, so it's not a big deal. All right, there you go, guys. Just wanted to show you. What kind of challenges you can face when taking off a Honda Acura crankshaft pulley bolt. I thought it was going to be a lot harder than that. And I am uh, pleasantly surprised to see that it wasn't. Now that I have the crankshaft pulley bolt off and the uh, pulley itself off, right inside here, I want to show you guys uh, how to set up the timing before you do a timing belt. So right here is a cover, right here is a cover. This would be on the passenger side of the engine if it was sitting in the vehicle. This little clip right here comes down, and this one does too. And once you get in there, you're going to start seeing numbers, like right there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there is a three inside there. Let me grab a flashlight. There's a number three. So there's six cylinders on here, so it's one through six. You have to rotate the crank to bring the cams into alignment and you want one to appear on the front one so right down there at the bottom there's a little mark on the plastic a raised indentation you can see it right there at my fingertip and that will actually line up with the number there's one over here too right there where are my fingers pointing right there see it so those alignment marks will line up with the number um, and you want it to line up to one. So let me put the bolt back in. Before I put the uh, crankshaft pulley bolt in, I'm going to put some grease on here just to make it that much easier to get it out when it's time to pull this bolt back out. I think these bolts get so tight is because they actually, uh, the way the engine rotates, it's just tightening up the bolt 
over how many years or how many miles you've actually put onto the engine. This is just a simple grease, Mobile One synthetic grease that I'm putting on there. Putting it back into where the crankshaft pulley bolt goes. And that's how I'm going to rotate the engine. Hey, what's up, man? That's how I'm going to rotate the engine back to number one. Okay, now let me rotate this engine. If you guys ever want to just check the condition of your belt, this will be on inside the engine. This would be the passenger side of the engine. You can always take one of these covers off. There's five bolts, five 10 millimeter bolts. One, two, three, four, five. You can take the uh, cover off and you can actually see the inside. You can see the belt. You can see if any ribs are missing, but uh, it won't show you if it's stretched at all. And I've seen that happen too. So you want to line up to one before you start taking the tying belt off because it makes it that much easier when you have to install it. I also like to mark on the cams where the belt actually sat. Okay, we're at one. Let me show you that inside there. Right down there you have your mark on the plastic cover, the indicator. If you guys can see that right there. Then looking up, You can see the number one, and then that line should correspond or line up to the mark on the inside of the cover, which it does. So now you're safe to go ahead and start taking off um, front and rear covers, your bottom cover. Okay, now that we have uh, the cam into place and lined up on our marker here, I want to show you what I was talking about as far as getting the crank crankshaft pulley bolt loose again. So I have the ratchet. 12 o'clock position. I'm just going to smack this real quick and it should break this bolt loose without moving this. And that didn't work. Guess I got to hit it a little bit harder. Okay. Didn't move, <laughs> and the bolt's loose. All right, so let's start taking the covers off. It's always a good idea once you get done with all your bolts and getting everything out, take the top covers, put your bolts inside there, and go on to the next one. Keep everything organized. We gotta remove this 12, this 14 millimeter bolt right here. There you go. Now I can get back here, take off my Last bolt for the top cover. This is how you gain access to the uh, timing belt on a J-Series Honda V6. Had to remove this uh, idler right here. There's a 14 millimeter bolt right in the center and a 12 millimeter right there on the bottom. This is your front cam. This is your back cam. This is your water pump. Right inside there is your water pump. Obviously this is your timing belt. This is your idler, idler pulley. This is your tensioner idler pulley. Right there is your tensioner. There's your crank. There's your keyway. And right here, the marks I was talking about, right where the dot is right now is your number one. You follow that up right there. You have another mark. That's where one should line up, so you can always move it around. If you need to move this back or forth, if it moves on you a little bit, you can always grab a 19 millimeter wrench and move it just a hair counterclockwise 
or hair clockwise, depending on which way you need to go to mark it, to, to line it up. If you guys want to see a full video on how to do a timing belt, I'll put a link in the description below. But this is how you gain access to it. So when you go in here, it's your best bet is to buy a timing belt component kit. You change, what, one, two, three, four, five critical components. You change your water pump, you change your tensioner idler pulley, you change your idler pulley, you change your tensioner down here, and you change your timing belt as well. There's a cover right here. Don't forget this, which way it goes on. It flares out, so the flared out part goes towards you. You can always mark it if you want to, you don't want to second guess yourself. It keeps the timing belt from getting torn up. There's markings on here, so I believe this is the original timing belt. I know I always get this wrong. I want to say Mitsubishi, but it's not. It's Mitsabu, Mitsubi, Mitsusubi. This is an OEM timing belt the Honda uses on their J-Series engines. And let's see. It's an ace and water pump. So this engine had 173,000 miles on it when the head gasket blew. So it looks like nobody has come in here and done the timing belt. Mitsushubi, Mitsushubi, Mitsushubi. I don't know. Sometimes I don't know how to pronounce those Japanese words. I had a GSXR and I had a Yoshimura exhaust on it. So that's how you gain access to your timing belt. Obviously, if it was on a car, it'd be a lot harder to do this. And if it wasn't, like I said, I'll put a link in the description below of me doing one inside a vehicle. If I got in here, saw this, that this marking was on the timing belt, I would go ahead and change everything inside there because it looks like it's an original timing belt. And you can always tell, like I said earlier, you can take the front cover off, rotate the engine, see if you see any markings on the belt. You can also see if any of the teeth are missing, if any of the teeth are missing, gone or worn out, or it's cracked. Go ahead and change it. If there's oil on the belt, change it. And we'll go from there. Let's see who makes this uh, tensioner real quick. Then I'll let you guys go. No markings on the tensioner. That's your crankshaft position sensor. Kind of a pain to get to. So next thing I will do is take the time belt, time belt off and show you how that's done. So if you want, follow along and we'll work this thing together. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you can, please subscribe to Bunny's Garage on YouTube. Questions, comments, concerns, you can always reach out to me at bundysgarage at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter. And like always, you can follow me on Twitter at Bundy's Garage. And like always, I'll keep them rolling for you. See you guys soon.